All right, this is a presentation on composition. So after you watch the presentation on the attributes, complete your notes to summarize each of the bullet points in a specific, specific line, specific line on your worksheet. Um, these are the notes on composition. And it's kind of nice if you'd like to watch um, the video. It's a nice video presentation giving you lots of different examples of different composition tips that you can use in your photographs. Um, a couple things with composition. First, limit the background distractions. That is that attribute of clear subject. Get rid of all the distractions and really think about what do I want my viewers to look at. When we talk about edge tension, keep subjects away from the edges of the photograph. Subjects should be either cut off significantly or far away from the edge. And you'll see more examples of that in this presentation. Watch for mergers. Mergers are bad, and you'll find out what those are. And consider using the rule of thirds. And again, we can put that rule of thirds um, in your camera on your phone. It's actually just a little setting that you can use to help you remember the rule of thirds, or we can use it also in Photoshop. So oftentimes when we start thinking about composition, we look at a picture, and uh, I ask the students, is this a good picture or a bad picture? And my question is, what is the reason for your answer? In my opinion, as a photography teacher, I would say this is a bad picture. And there's a couple different technical reasons why. Uh, first off, she's smack dab in the middle, and that's um, going against the rule of thirds composition. Um, your subject should not be right in the middle. There's a merger here. This, see how the tree is growing out of her head? That's a no-no, that's a merger. So even if the photographer would have stepped one step to the left or one step to the right, that would have changed the position of that tree behind her. What is the main subject? What is the photographer trying to focus on? Her. So zoom in on her, right? We don't need to see the trees and the We'll see the stuff behind her a little bit, but zoom in on her, we can barely see her face. There's all this other background distraction that we don't need to see. They are not as important as the main subject, which is her. So this could have been improved in many different ways. The rule of thirds is the concept, if you've ever played tic-tac-toe. The lines where they intersect are where you want to position your subject matter. So instead of having her right in the middle, the photographer could have moved their camera a little bit so maybe she was right over here across these two points. Or maybe she was over here on these two points. That's going to create interest. So you can see how this photographer has lined up the bottle not to be in the middle but to a side. And photography uses the rule of thirds, painting, drawing, many two-dimensional art forms use the rule of thirds as a composition technique. So notice this bird is on the points over here to the left and he's looking to the right so that's correct. It would look weird if he was over here on the right points looking to the right. Same with the biker. Um, play with the sense, we call this negative space. Um, play with that and use that to guide your viewer's eye around the composition. Here you can see the photographer lined up the horizon line where the sky meets the land with that line and the tree to make it an interesting composition. So aligning these points and your subject matter can give energy, interest, and movement to your composition. Use the rule of thirds. And if you forget, when we bring your photos into Photoshop, we can always crop them and use the rule of thirds there. A couple other tips for you, focus on a portion of your subject. So this is what we talk about when we talk about edge tension. They zoomed in on her face. Her face is cut off on three of the four sides of the composition. That is edge tension. It creates an interesting composition. 
use something in the foreground. When we talk about the foreground, that's usually the objects closest to the viewer. And then there's the middle ground in the background. So try putting something close to you and focus on that and then have something interesting in the background. Right. Notice that this photographer and this one, they're both getting down low. They're getting at that eye level of the object as well. Here, these two are in the foreground. She's in the middle ground, which is kind of interesting. Find lines and curves to move the viewer's eye. And this is what you saw in the video. They were showing many different photographs that had visual lines to lead your eye around the piece. Again, not the greatest picture by any means. There's too much background distraction. But you can use lines to move the viewer's eye around the composition. Try unusual angles. Okay. Instead of taking something straight on, get on your belly and take it from down low. Right? Here's a little puppy dog. Get it from the dog's eye view or your little cousin's eye view. Or maybe you stand on the top of a table and angle your camera down. These are different composition tips that you should be trying to use in your photographs. And you'll be surprised at how well you can take photographs right away. Summarize the bullet points in this presentation. Be sure to watch the video and submit your work.